everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today on our Influence Stories with Ana Taina Shepard from Live in Miami. And we're going to talk about the real estate outlook um, in South Florida, which is her specialty. Eh, bienvenidos todos a nuestro Influence Stories. Este va a ser bilingüe y vamos a hablar sobre el tema inmobiliario en el sur de la Florida. Taina, tell us a little bit about your um, your business and what you work on, because I know a lot of entrepreneurs um, like to listen to us and, and think about ways of starting a new business. And you started this as a new business and you've done amazing. So congratulations. Tell us a little bit about that process. Well, first of all, thank you, for, thank you, uh, Ellen, for having us here, uh, Living Miami Real Estate Team, here in your, in your broadcast. My business partner, Delia Escalante, couldn't be with us, but thank you so much for having us. In uh, regards to your question, well, it has been an interesting ride. As you, as you mentioned, as an entrepreneur, we have built uh, what I consider a solid brand. Uh, Living in Miami has become a recognized brand in Miami. We have worked very hard you know, on the Rica Realty Group, which is our brokerage home uh, to, to build. You know, this uh, little niche, which is Delay Escalante, Taina Shepard, as a team. And we specialize here in Miami market, as you said, in South Florida. And it has been a challenging times, you know, at, you know, moments in history lately, especially. But uh, it has been a great ride. So we're going to talk about those challenging times um, in this interesting market that is South Florida. So how is the South Florida market different from maybe any other market? Well, you know, the South Florida market is very unique. And I'm going to tell you why the difference uh, with the rest of the United States, especially. OK, um, the world has a, a, a this love relationship, this infatuation with Miami. OK, because Miami has so much to offer. We are a diverse community. We have a lot of entertainment, uh, diversity, food. You name it, we have it all. We and have we everything. Certain, yeah, we're certainly located because really Miami's in the middle of it all. We are close to um, the Latin America, close to the Caribbean, close to the islands, and it's really an important economic engine. So it, it, it is a mix of what this love relationship people have with Miami, which is a, is a mix of the cultures and everything that we bring to the table. So that makes it different itself because it's a market that has everything, a, a little bit of everything for everybody. So That's I think right. it's something that, that not every market in the States uh, can offer, you know. Exactly. And also, I mean, we talk about Latin America a lot, but the truth is that we have the American Airlines hub right here in Miami International Airport. So there's also a huge connection to Europe, very Correct. direct flights every day. Every several day. a day um Correct. so it's also even though new york is a little bit closer to europe we also have a you know direct flights and so that also brings in so where are most investors from when they come to south florida what are what do you see in your business de donde vienen la mayoría de los inversionistas aquí en el sur de la florida de lo que tú has visto en tu negocio bueno, eso depende, porque realmente de todos lados realmente eh, miami es un mercado que tiene que tiene inversionistas de todos lados dentro de Estados Unidos y cuando nos, espe nos especializamos en hablar dentro de de dónde vienen los que están invirtiendo fuerte en este momento en el sur de la Florida, hay mucha gente que está viniendo de Nueva York, de New Jersey, de Connecticut, de Washington. ¿Por qué? Porque en estos mercados tenemos, tienen los taxes eh, estatales y de ciudad que nosotros no tenemos y de estado. Entonces, ¿qué pasa? Al relocarse, ellos se manejan ese sistema de taxes a beneficio de ellos. Entonces, durante esta época, sobre todo de la pandemia, hubo mucho, mucho interés y hay mucho interés de todo lo que es el Northeast de Estados Unidos hacia Miami, ¿ok? Mm. Por, no solamente por, el tax, por la taxación, sino también por aquello de que se dieron cuenta de que están en áreas muy limitadas geográficamente, con mucha población y aquí les brinda mucho mayor calidad de vida. Por otro lado, a nivel de Latinoamérica, el mexicano está invirtiendo mucho en Miami, Colombia invierte mucho en Miami, son mercados muy fuertes y realmente hay, hay razones tanto económicas como de gobierno que están haciendo que, esa, que esos mercados se muevan mucho hacia Miami, que es donde hay una economía fuerte, una moneda, lo que llamamos dura, y una economía no fluctuante como la de los países de Latinoamérica. 
Well, I'm going to have to ask you to say all that in English again. So tell yes. me a little bit about what is the breakup that you see? Because I know I'm seeing all of the, our viewers start to sign up now. And yes, I yes. can tell that some of them would like the same answer in English. So um, tell us a little bit about the breakup of the buyers that you're seeing right now in your yes. properties. And I would also like to encourage everybody to please send us your questions. Um, and we're here today on Influence Stories with Diana Shepard of Live in Miami. Yes, one of the one of the strong markets that we see right now, and is definitely one of the big investors right now inside of United States, is New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Washington DC. It is as well as California. California is investing mm -hmm. in in this side of the the country, but definitely the Northeast uh, part is a, is a strong investor right now. First of all, because Miami is, a, as I said, a unique uh, location that has so much to offer, not only the weather, the beach for the entertainment, the food, the, the culture, diversity. We have so much to offer, but also the competitive price by the square foot compared with New York, uh, France, San Francisco, Boston, and other big uh, cities. So we still have in a very good competitive prices per square footage. Now, in, in relation, that is in relation with investors inside the United States. Now, in relation with uh, investors coming from other countries, we see very strong uh, Mexico is investing very strong. Uh, Colombia is investing very strong. Germany is investing very strong. So there is there is a lot of reasons why uh, Latin American countries are still investing here uh, because it's economic uh, system that is not fluctuating as much and that they can bring and diversify the portfolio as far as uh, uh, real estate investment. That's a great, great point. And how interesting that the Northeast, I mean, the Northeast has always been a place, you know, where, yes. where, where the South Florida has always been a place where the Northeast likes to go. You know, we talk about the people that come down for the winter. Um, yes. But what's also interesting, let's talk about, of course, what's on everybody's mind, COVID. Yes. So yes. tell us a little bit about, have you seen a dip in the market with COVID? Um, everybody was afraid that there was going to be a massive fall um, because of COVID. We are, you know, we're, we're experiencing what some see as a second wave of COVID. Some call it just continuation of the first after the reopening right now in South Florida. However, tell me a little bit about how COVID has affected the market, if at all. Well, let me tell you what has had happened with COVID. COVID certainly have had an impact, not only in the real estate per se, but in the way of doing real estate, okay? It has definitely been a process of, of changing and adapting for every market uh, especially here in miami as i said because we have so many people investing from other places that we need to uh, accommodate all the virtual tours virtual presentations and, and learning how to do this in a in a more expeditious and practical ways but also in the market okay um there was when when we started this process back in in march and april definitely was a full stop it was a it was a very low um percentage of transactions being done okay now that we are kind of reopening and people as i said from from the northeast and other uh, other parts of the world are investing here it's still steady okay right now it's a steady market and it's a, and it's it's expected to be a steady market for a few months and i'm going to tell you why Remember that um, real estate market has different aspects. One of the aspects is the, the consumer uh, confidence in the market, a stimulus from the government, economic factors, okay, but also in this category for the fact that many people are under forbearance. So many people that lost their jobs, okay, are under the forbearance period that the government gave to back up loans for six months in some cases and the the government back up loans have another six months that they could apply so the 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 the, the risk factor is not there yet because they're still in that process so right. the, the market is still steady uh people are still doing transactions and definitely it's a point where there is opportunities in the market Right. So talk to me about those opportunities. Where do you see opportunities coming up for investors as well as, you know, regular people who want to buy a new house? They need to maybe um, maybe they're renters now or they want to buy a condo. Do you see opportunities for both investors and, you know, run of the mill buyers? 
Well, I'll tell you, especially for the first time home buyers, uh, people have been renting the whole time. I think this is a great opportunity because one of the, the economic uh, factors and engine and all this is the interest rates. So interest rates as a result of the economic uh, stimulus that the, the, the feds are putting in, you know, to kind of pump it up and right. to, to is uh, the, the, the interest rates. The interest mm -hmm. rate at all time low, so we have keeping records in United States, so low, lower than three percent. So amazing. that means, which is amazing, that never happened before. Mm -hmm. So that means that this is the time when people that are for the first time considering, you know, investment in their own properties. This is the time because there are many programs for first-time home buyers, home readiness programs that could get them their house of their dreams and their first home. So this is for them a great opportunity to apply for a loan. Okay. Um, as far as investors, there are great markets right now to invest. And what drives a great mar market is the amount of supply and demand. When you have a lot of supply in one market, that becomes a buyer's market. So there are certain space places in um in miami that are definitely good to look at and a very good option for investors oh i'm gonna have to i think this is really important for you to say in spanish háblame un poquito sobre qué oportunidades hay para inversionistas y también para personas que a lo mejor están pensando en comprarse una casa a lo mejor por primera vez que siempre han alquilado y ahora quieren tomar ese paso cuáles cuáles son estos hay, es un momento de oportunidad o es un momento de esperar no, este, definitivamente para aquellos que siempre han rentado y que quieren por primera vez ser propietarios, este es un gran momento. Y les explico por qué. Uh, desde, desde que tenemos conciencia de estar llevando los números y récord de los números a nivel de todo lo que es um, rates um, de, de préstamos. Sí, eh, los préstamos bancarios. Los préstamos, los préstamos bancarios uh -huh. es lo más bajo que hay en este momento. Las tasas bancarias están bien bajas, por debajo del 3%, lo cual hace que sea una grandísima oportunidad junto y aunado a los, pro, los programas que hay para los primeros compradores de casas. Entonces, tenemos grandes programas a muy buenos intereses bancarios en este pro de hecho nosotros acabamos de ayudar a varias familias a un 275 por wow. ciento estamos hablando de un o sea de una diferencia a unos años atrás un tiempo atrás de un 4 por ciento que es bastante grande entonces definitivamente este es el, el momento en, 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 una, en una persona una familia que quiera comprar a través de un ahí del lado de la perspectiva para un inversionista igualmente porque si es un inversionista que quiere comprar eh, financiado también hay programas con muy buen rate para, para inversionistas extranjeros y hay definitivamente muy buenas oportunidades en un mercado que tiene bastante uh, inventario que ofrecer y áreas que definitivamente se han convertido en una muy buena opción para un inversionista. Y ese es el tema ¿no? que, que he visto, eso sí me he fijado, eh, yo soy... Eh, no sé, eh, me, me, me interesa mucho, siempre me ha interesado mucho, tú lo sabes, el, el mercado inmobiliario del sur de la Florida, me gusta mucho estar siempre viendo las lo propiedades sé. y me he dado cuenta que, este, que hay movimiento, de hecho sí, veo sí. que se pone una propiedad y al mes ya se vendió, o sea, ya está under contract o menos en muchos casos. ¿Tú ves este mercado en este momento, eh, mencionaste antes de que había, hay o no hay? O sea, yo me estoy dando cuenta que hay poca propuesta o, es, o estoy equivocada. O sea, pocas, eh, que hay como menos, eh, que están poniendo menos cosas a la venta. Uh, bueno, o, y eso, o, no, ¿lo digo en español o en inglés? En español y después lo vamos a decir en inglés. <risa> bueno, realmente tienes, tienes razón en las dos cosas y te voy a decir por qué. Hay mercados que en este momento el soft market, ¿Ok? Más fuerte que hay en este momento en relación a lo rápido que se vende y al nivel que se vende está, por ejemplo, Cora Gables, Coconut Grove, um, Pinecrest. Esos son mercados súper fuertes, en donde de hecho no duran las propiedades, las casas. Okay. Y te voy a decir por qué. Hay dos mundos dentro del real estate. Lo que es el condo y lo que es el, la, la, sing, las casas individuales, los single family homes. Son uh -huh. dos mundos diferentes, ¿ok? Eh, en cuanto a Coconut Grove, Coral Gables, uh, Pinecrest, South Miami, son unos mercados muy fuertes que realmente hay poco lo que sale y, y se vende muy rápido, ¿ok? Eso por un lado. Así que es, 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 esa percepción tuya es cierto. Y sobre todo por el área donde tú vives. Esa área donde tú vives, de Coral Gables, esa área es hot. Uh -huh. eh, 
de hasta un millón y medio de dólares salen y venden y, y se venden inmediatamente es una locura yeah. y te voy a decir por qué porque es que hay muy poco inventario de casas single family homes yeah. en ese rango para esa área y es una de las áreas que en todo este proceso la gente que vi, viene de, del noreste de Estados Unidos quiere single families y están buscando single families entonces esa es una de las áreas donde más están buscando por otro lado, no hay tanto entrando, ok, en el, en el mercado, uh -huh. por lo que te estoy diciendo. Hay mucha gente que ahorita durante esta, esta situación de que 42 millones de personas se han quedado sin, sin empleos, el, el, hay mucho estímulo entrando ahorita. Entonces uh -huh. el estímulo, incluyendo los forbearance, está sujetando un mercado, ok. Uh -huh. Lo que vamos a ver es qué pase después, cuando ya los forbearance process y el tiempo de, de perdón este, de, los, de, los, de las mortgage haya pasado y haya que reiniciar el proceso, ahí es donde tenemos que ver cómo se ajusta el mercado. Exactamente. Vamos a hablar, I, actually, the question that they just asked in English, uh, what would you say is the main driver in the real estate market right now? Is the families looking to move up to a better home? I think this has a lot to do with what you just said in Spanish. So if you could tell us a little bit in English, what's driving you know what's driving the market right now tell us a little bit about what the market is whether it's a buyer's market or a seller's market but tell us a little bit about what you were just saying about the areas in miami-dade county and we have the question here of how is the doral area well we I have a question that just came in <laughs> yes i'm gonna go with your first question mm -hmm. okay your first question the market is driven by people uh two things and there are different there are different answers for this okay in general okay remember that 53 percent of homes in united states are owned by baby boomers okay those are the people that have the biggest homes that have the largest homes and that they want to downsize okay those are homes that are gonna enter the market are in the process of entering the market okay so having said that there are people that in that category from the northeast that want to move to a better um weather okay or that definitely want a, a, a more quiet place to raise their families is driven the market okay definitely you know miami is a place where either for economic reason for work reason for relocation reasons or for family reasons okay miami is a center where you don't want to lose and that's why it's one of the hot markets and it will be a hot market because that, that low relationship that mm -hmm. i'm telling you that they were have with miami either <laughs> because we have a culture either because of the weather it because of the beach whatever reason it is but people like miami but and one of the reasons that is driven the market is that the competitive prices by square footage people relocating People looking for better options in weather, especially after after the pandemic, people have seen that how important it is to be in a place that you can not be confined inside of a little apartment. And they're looking for options. They're looking for options in single homes, in, in, in places that it could bring more of a family environment. Um, and definitely this is a strong market. Miami will always be a, a good market to invest. And, and I wanted to ask you, like we talked about, um, what about you know the the like you said well the first time home buyers um can take advantage of these amazing rates that the banks are giving now how hard is it to that you have seen since this, these rates went down how difficult is it to actually get a loan because these rates sound fantastic but then you go to the bank and you can't get them are they actually attainable for a normal person or do they have to have a hundred perfect like perfect perfect 100 percent no, perfect credit no no it's attainable it's attainable we have work right now is deal with people that have less than perfect credit there are programs that with 580 you can qualify for an fha loan uh you need to two years standard because it's still you know more or less the same it has been a little bit more challenging for investors okay mm, for people okay from all their countries Okay, okay. It was a moment for when they changed the rules. First of all, you could be, be before this time they could enter with 30% to 35% down. Now they're requiring 50% down Ooh, okay. for investors, so, for but investors, foreign investors or foreign just investors, any type of foreign. For foreign investors. Wow, um, so for them, it's been a little bit more challenging. But for people that live here that want to have a loan, it's been the same. And actually, it's two year taxes, you know, the, all, all the regular stuff that, that we ask. 
580 at least in the in the in the score credit mm -hmm. and also even though that if you have your pay stops they're going to require a letter from your employer making okay. sure that after your last paycheck covid didn't get you out of job Ah, so that's, one of the things that's that they are really right important. That's really so important. there's a little bit more of like having to get a letter from your employer to, yes. to see that you're still employed as still per employed. your last Correct, pay stuff. Because Exactly. They just want okay. to make sure that that you still in the track even after. Uh, and they check several times during the process to of make course. sure you're still having a job, even though that they approved you. So, yeah, but it's still, it's still doable and, and we can get it done. This is a really good question. What if you are self-employed? Have you seen issues with the loans if you are self-employed? Well, no, I haven't. I haven't. It, the requirements is still being the same. As long as you have a sustainable numbers that you can prove that you're still in the business, you're still uh, in, the, in, in the, the numbers, you are not losing money, you're still operating under... No, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Right. I mean, I, I think maybe that's a question also for more of like an accountant because sometimes Correct. when you're self-employed, you do some things and okay. it's a little bit different than, than just having a regular job where you get a paycheck every two weeks. Correct, but, but so. that part, the requirements are going to be the same for the bank. The bank is going to ask everything from your account, and as long as you have how to prove that you have a business that is producing an income, okay, and that you have the trust, okay, you gain the trust from the entity, for they say, hey, okay, you are solid enough for me to lend you the money, okay, mm -hmm. because your business is solid, I don't see why it will not happen. I, right. it's not, it's not, indeed, we're working with, a, with an investor like that here, and he hasn't had any problems so far. That's good to hear. We also have, a, uh, we have Oscar asking questions. He um, is, you know, a well-known real estate reporter, so he would like to know, and it's true, it's a good question. Many people, like like now there's this all this um you know for sale by owner in fact i've seen it you know if you're if you're a realtor don't even bother calling me like i've seen the ads you know <laughs> so why would anybody want to use a realtor or a broker if they could just go and sell it themselves like why 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 do that why go through that process and that expense because there is a six percent um commission that you guys make right so Yes, um, yes. Well, between you and the buyer, the seller, yes, in yes, general, yes, yes. that's how yes. much it is. So tell me a little bit yes. about why, why hire or why go with a, with a realtor? Well, I always say the same, the same way that I don't want to take a tooth out of my mouth myself and I go to a dentist. <laughs> yes. It's the same process. I always think that using a, a professional in the area that you need, is always going to work the best. Why? Any person can put a yard sign and said for sale by owner. But that person doesn't have the capacity to veto and to make sure the person is a qualified buyer. Okay. So when we come in, we come in with a strategy, with knowledge of the market, with a, with a, with a um, complete analysis of not only your unit that you're going to sell, but also the market around you. What are your options? What are the, the, the people don't understand also that the market, the real estate market works in waves and in economic cycles. Where is the economic cycles in your area right now? Economic cycles vary in the market. Not all the uh, areas are at the same point and in a point of time. So that makes a difference. Makes a difference when you have the knowledge in how to negotiate, in what to look for, in how to veto that person, in what your strategy in that area. So everything is is a, is a, is definitely um, a, a big difference when you work with a real estate agent. Right. I mean, it's the same thing. Not not for nothing, but it's the same thing that I always tell my clients. Um, you know, yeah, you can go and try to write a press release by yourself and send Correct. it out there. But Correct. we have a network of journalists Correct. that we work with every day. We have, we know how to distribute your news. We know how to pitch your news. We know how to write the press release so that it gets Correct. picked up. Um, so there's a process, even though it sounds like a one, two, three step, it's not Correct. necessarily that cookie cutter simple. Right. No, it's not, especially not in Miami market, especially in Miami market where everything, there is a lot of things that are diverse, that are moving parts, that um, that you need to be making sure that every part of the process is clean. So th that's what we assure you when you work 
with a good real estate agent like our TLB Miami and our broker's office, uh, Bricker Realty Group, we have make sure that everything is done from A to C and the process and the acknowledgement behind is reliable and it's a professional service in the best of our capabilities. Now, there's also an issue going on with COVID as well, which is the whole, um, you can't evict anybody from your property. Um, have you guys been dealing with anything like that? I know that in Miami-Dade County, it was extended as yes. to um, nobody can be evicted. Can you explain yes. to us a little bit of what that means? Look, it's been very, very difficult. I think, look, uh, in, in a personal side, I, I can tell you that I have personally cried with, with clients of ours. Um, it has been uh, heartbreaking to see this process. If there are so many people that were for love or layout or they lost their job for good, um, they are renters. They are. They mm -hmm. depend in, you know, if the goodness of the landlord. So there was never okay. Um, you cannot evict anybody, okay. But there's always there was always a consensus that need to be made between the landlord and the and the um the tenant. The rent. Yes, mm -hmm. in the how we're gonna manage that, okay? Because for the other side, you have the landlord that is pressuring you as a realtor. I want my money, I want my money, they need to pay, they need to pay. And you have for the other side, this person that cannot pay, humanly cannot pay. Right. So how we have reached a middle point? Well, we have come to an agreement is, okay, let's try to do this. We Let's try to pay half of your rent and then we put, pay, put the other half towards the end operating. Uh, the other half that you've been moving along. Uh, but certainly, you know, there is not... Um, you cannot you cannot evict anybody, but certainly the process is going to start very quick as soon as they can. That's the problem. I mean, we also have to think about you know landlords because yes. a lot of them use. I mean, they they may own a couple of properties that they rent out. They still have to pay maintenance. They still have to yes. pay taxes at the end of the year. They still have to pay if something breaks. They still have to you know they have yes. expenses and maybe yes. that is part of their income. Yes. And so yeah. the issue is that. I mean, I understand and I'm 100% for it, but there is, has to be, when this ends, there has to be a way to make all of these ends meet. Yes, so that's what we're trying, yeah, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to conciliate the fact that, yes, we're gonna give you a break and the owner is willing to give you a break. How we're gonna do it now is that the, the part that we did work with. So in many points, you will, we reach that, okay, for the next two months, you pay half of the rent. Okay, but then remember that those are going to be prorated right, right after. Right, because you can't just forget about that money. I mean, you, you signed a contract. You cannot forget about it. So right. this is something that people have to understand. You yes. signed a contract. So at some point, yes. this will catch up. Eh, aquí hay una pregunta en español, que lo hablamos en inglés, pero no lo hemos hablado en español. ¿Cómo están los bancos ahora con los requisitos? Eh, lo mencionaste antes. Háblame un poquito sobre los, los intereses de los bancos. Ahora están bien bajitos. Pero es muy difícil conseguir estos préstamos maravillosos, unicornios de, no, 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 de los bancos. No, 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 no es muy difícil y de hecho es un muy buen momento. Y de hecho los invito a que hagamos ese ejercicio, que además no nos cuesta nada que lo hagamos. Porque realmente es un muy buen momento, realmente es un momento histórico en lo bajo que están los, los intereses. Les estaba contando que de hecho nosotros hemos cerrado transacciones por debajo del 3%, en un 2.75%, con un, con un averaje de puntuación de score que no es el perfecto tampoco. Entonces, hay planes desde el 5.80% en, en score. Eh, no serán 275, pues puede ser un 3%, eh, y las regulaciones son, siguen siendo las mismas. Mientras podamos demostrar que hay un trabajo estable, que la relación entre las deudas y lo que entra no sobrepasa cierto límite, mientras podamos demostrar que la persona tiene la capacidad de asumir esa deuda, el banco está dispuesto a darlo. Entonces, este es el momento, yo pienso, ideal para gente que no ha comprado casa antes, porque además hay programas que los incentivan como primeros compradores a entrar en este proceso. Eso es lo bonito, ¿no? Es que los primeros compradores puedan tomar eh, esta, esta, esta como una oportunidad para convertirse en dueños de su propia casa. Ahora, eh, háblame, ya que estamos hablando en español, para los que nos ven de Latinoamérica y de España, háblame un poquito sobre lo que me dijiste de 
que lo, para los inversionistas extranjeros quizás se está poniendo un poco más difícil. Bueno, sí, de hecho, de hecho cambió un poquito las reglas para los inversionistas extranjeros. Eh, antes estábamos encontrando eh, eh, financiamiento entre un 30 y un 35% para down, para down, ¿ok? Para lo que uh -huh. es el, el, el enganche o la cuota inicial, como le dicen en otros países. Ahorita están repitiendo el 50%. Pero ahora, esta es la situación. Para gente que está comprando inversionistas en proyectos nuevos, en preconstrucciones, y siempre ha sido el 50% prorrateado, ya sea en preconstrucción, ya seas local o seas eh, de otro país, ¿ok? Siempre se entra con 50%. Ahora, sí cambió eso en cuanto a, una, a, a gente que está buscando inversionistas de otro país en reventa, ya no es el 30, 35%, es el 50% y los requerimientos son siempre más o menos lo mismo, lo cual para gente de otros países es mucho más fácil que nosotros porque no hay manera de tener una relación entre las deudas y los ingresos en otro país. Exactamente. Entonces para ellos es mucho más fácil adquirir claro. un préstamo porque solamente cartas del de, eh, trabajo, estados bancarios, carta del contador y cartas de, de recomendaciones. Entonces realmente el, el proceso para ellos es mucho más fácil, pero sí se está requiriendo más dinero al frente. Sí, siempre que tengan exacto lo que es este, la cuota inicial, como quien dice, es ¿no? Correcto. Siempre que tengan eso. Es correcto. Es Muy correcto. bien, pues ya nos hemos pasado el tiempo. It's, we're going over 30 minutes here and I always like to stop it at 30 minutes. Um, I really appreciate it. I think we're going to have to do a little redux Absolutely. and see what happens in a few months, like you mentioned. Uh, because Absolutely. I think that real estate is all, something that's very important in South Florida. We all know it. We're all touched by it. Um, I really appreciate your time, Taina. And we're well, going to tag you, you guys okay. here um, on our comments so that you guys um, can reach Taina and ask her any thank questions so um, that you may have. And I can tell you thank she you. is a wealth of information. So I thank highly so recommend much. that you write to her. Thank you so much. And we appreciate the time, Elena. Uh, you are your company that gave us today. So thank you so much to all of you. Thank you, everybody. Today, this was our Influence Stories for the Week with Taina Shepard from Live in Miami. Have a wonderful week and a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.